This man Magneto deserves so much more respect than he gets. And these are the reasons why. Let me start off with the backstory and then I'll get to it. Being born in the late 1920s, yes! Max Eisenhardt grew up in a middle class family in Germany. He and his family was of Jewish descent. And because of that, even though his father was a well-respected army veteran, the growing amount of ridicule they faced grew way beyond what they could handle once the Nazis grew to power. After having their rights stripped away and all of their belongings destroyed, they fled to Poland only to find more Nazis. And there, they were caught. The Eisenhardt's Max, his father and mother, Jakob and Eddie, and his little sister, Ruth, were all lined up and executed, each falling into a mass grave. But a little time passes, and Max walks out of this grave. And though happy to be alive, he's devastated at the thought of being alone in this cruel world. This is the birth of the man named Magneto. When I was younger, to be honest, I always kind of saw him as your normal old villain. And that's because I saw the old X-Men movies. But the things he does often goes against a true villain status quo. Like when he tried to screw over the senator. He didn't do it for world domination or anything like that. He did it for the betterment of mutant kind and their survival. And that's because he's never truly been an evil guy. Just a man with lots of ambition. Someone who knows he was meant for more. He went through life hollow inside, being forced to work as a gang member that disposed dead bodies, where he saw hundreds of thousands of dead bodies almost every week. And this went on for years until he found the light of his life, his childhood crush, Magda. It was there when he escaped the concentration camp and started a family. And they lived a quiet life for a while until Magneto realized he wanted more. He wanted to be a carpenter in the city and go to college. So against Magda's wishes, they moved to the city of Venencia and Max changes his name to Magnus. But as soon as they get there, he was met with fraud and tragedy. His job was trying to cheat him out of his pay and Magnus gets so mad that his powers resurfaces and he mistakenly threatens the man with a crowbar. And afterwards, that night, he came home and found the place him and his family were staying at up in flames. His daughter still inside, all caused by an angry mob started by that same guy that tried to cheat him out of his pay. He tried to save her, but the mob held him back and overpowered him. And before you know it, Anya was gone as well. In a fit of rage, Magneto's powers resurfaces and not only does he kill the mob, he destroys half of the city with them. Horrified at the sight of Magnus, Magda leaves him and calls him a monster, when in actuality, he was just a grieving parent that lost his only child. So yeah, he just wanted more for his life, being a carpenter to support his family and going to college. Like, is that so wrong? This man probably has the most tragic backstory in all of comics. He survived the freaking Holocaust, which is already a huge feat in and of itself. He's seen thousands of dead bodies, lost not only his family he was born with, but also the family he created as an adult. And all his life, he suffers unfair treatment from being Jewish and being a mutant. And despite all of that, he keeps on fighting. Every time he got knocked down, he got right back up and kept pursuing his goal. That goal being to never let another mutant go through what he's been through. Which means this man is a savior at heart. This is the complete opposite of Professor Xavier, who had a childhood filled with people who loved and understood him. Now, of course, he had a lot of hardships, but it's still a very good backstory compared to Magneto's. But even though they go about it in different ways, they both have the same overall goal for the most part, because they're two sides of the same coin. One wanting to coexist with humans, and the other wanting to be completely separate from them and create a nation where mutants can be free from oppression. This is why I respect Magneto. Because he's been through so much more than the average person, and he's powerful as f He has the power to destroy the whole world with a thought. Because magnetism can not only be used to attract and repel metal, he can take every nuclear warhead in the world and use it for whatever he wants. He can cause asteroids to rain down on Earth, and can even destroy the biosphere if he really wants to. That means he can destroy the Earth's magnetic field, causing radiation to bombard the planet, wiping out most of, if not all of technology. 
blackouts on a global scale, plus everyone, and I mean everyone, getting cancer and radiation sickness, like we're all on the Oprah Winfrey show. But he chooses not to, because that's not his true goal. He's not on some Dr. Doom or Mr. Sinister stuff. He just wants to be free, and he wants others to be free as well. And speaking of that, I've heard some people say, well, he's a terrible dad. And to that, I say maybe, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. But man, despite all of the power he has, he couldn't protect the last kid he had. Do you know how much psychological damage that can do to somebody? I don't because I don't have a kid, but I'm sure it's a lot. So even if Magneto knew about the twins, I actually wouldn't be surprised if he didn't want to take care of them for their safety. But I'm sure he would have since he went to see his newborn grandchild in the comics after finding out he had kids of his own all of this time. And this is another reason why I like him, bro. Like, because he's not a bad dude. He does bad things, but he's not a bad dude, really. Oh, and by the way, this dude has some insane feats. We already talked about how he almost killed a senator that was threatening to take out all of the mutants in the world. But he also sunk Soviet submarines, killed the Red Skull, generated a massive EMP that shut down the technology of the entire planet, ripped the adamantium from Wolverine's body, destroy and rebuild an entire city like he's on Cartoon Network or something, and reverse the Earth's polarity, which is something I don't even understand. I don't know what that means, but I know for a fact that it did some damage when he did that. But still, with all of that power, depending on who's writing him, all he wants to do is save mutant kind. How can you not respect a man like this? I don't know. I, I just love what this dude stands by. And to be honest, Marvel might have DC beat when it comes to complex villains. Let me know what y'all think, though. Are there any other villains that are as complex and understandable as him? I'd love to hear about it so I can make a video about it. Until then, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.